Hello everyone, my name is Tana Masid. I am a PhD student from University Hassan of Morocco. The title of my presentation is A Data Light Problem with Data Preference. So first, uh, I'm going to give a brief introduction of the classical dialogue problem with time windows. Then I am going to talk about the version of dialogue problem with time windows that we propose with additional rate conditions. Then uh, the proposed algorithm to solve this problem. And then finally, we talk about some results and then we discuss it. So in the dynamite problem, there is a depot and a set of vehicles, and we have different users with different time that represent the number of passengers riding the vehicles. Each user specifies the origin and the destination. The objective function is to find a set of routes for each um, for the vehicles so that each customer is served with the app to minimize the total cost traveled by the vehicles. Talking about uh, the cost that can be the distance or time or other measure, and this under a set of concerns, uh, capacity resources and capital concerns. Uh, for example, as in the illustration here, we could to the pass from the depot to pick up at least eight uh, and 10. Thereafter, request 8 is dropped off at its uh, destination. Then pick up request 12 and uh, proceed uh, to transport request 10 and 12 to the destination before returning to the depot. So there are many versions of the daylight problem. One of them is the daylight problem with the time windows. In this problem, the customer may specify a time window for either the pickup point or the delivery point of a boat. So we need uh, to know the time between each pair of customers, the duration of the visit, what makes the problem harder to visualize, and we get overlap solution like that. So in the version that we propose, we have a set of uh, customers and a set of taxis, and we are looking to optimize the route of taxis uh, to transport customers from their origins uh, to their destination. Moreover, to take into account the rate conditions, uh, the drivers of taxis may have preferences, for example, to start to the route from their homes and have specific destination especially when they have as objective to pick up as many requests as possible after reaching a destination that they were first done in a specific time from the journey. So we propose that each driver has the possibility to specify his origin and destination and the time to reach this destination and we are looking for a path for each taxi more or less determined because we know the origin of the taxi and where it wants to go. And we need to meet some concerns, uh, capacity concerns. Each uh, taxi has a certain capacity, which is the number of passengers it can carry out at the same time. Precedence concerns, uh, we need to transfer passengers from their origin to their destinations. Uh, capital concerns, uh, the same taxi must visit the origin and destination points indicated by each request. And for the time concerns, the taxi must reach, uh, reach uh, the origin or the destination of the customer between two given moments. Uh, however, in this case, the time windows uh, are a soft uh, concern. Then we need to, keep, uh, to change the objective function to keep up with the changes. So we minimize the multiplicity function that we transform into an aggregate objective function, aggregate three terms. Uh, the first equation represent the total travel time of all taxis. In equation two, the objective is modeled the uh, travel time based with the linear function based on vehicle arrival time at the vertex. If, um, if the vehicles arrive at the vertex before it's ready time, they, there are two cases. If the vertex it is a pickup point, the penalty is imposed to limit that the driver waits for a long time before picking up a customer. Otherwise, if it is delivery, uh, there is no customer who has an interest to arrive before the desired time. If the vehicle arrives at a vertex after its due time, uh, a penalty is imposed to limit the fact uh, that uh, the service time of the customer is exceeded or the fact that the driver arrives at his destination after the expected time. For the third objective, we, uh, we minimize uh, the difference between the actual travel time and the direct travel time uh, from origin to, to destination point. We propose an algorithm to solve this problem. So first, we use uh, first we use the uh, consecutive heuristic based on a list order of requests uh, based on time windows and uh, try to insert each request in the best possible position. 
then we give uh, this solution to our algorithm iteration local search. Uh, iteration local search is, is a metaheuristic that passes on three steps, local search, perturbation, and the stopping criteria to make uh, the search more efficient. Uh, also, we incorporate the iteration local search with the, the random variable neighborhood descent method here to provide an initial improvement that gives a good initial solution. So in the first uh, test, uh, we adapt four local search from the literature, lo uh, locate uh, operation, try to move one local uh, request from its original to the best pos uh, possible position in any other route. The Excel uh, exchange move uh, swaps two sequences of uh, requests between trials and uh, in the best possible way. Exchange natural uh, performs the best possible swap of two sequences of requests before and after which uh, the vehicle is empty. And in the F, uh, F4 opt, uh, four successive uh, acts uh, are removed at a time from a route, and all possible ways to reconnect, reconnect uh, the remaining segments are investigated with, it, with the respect to precedence concept. So in the local search uh, stage, we use a uh, local search with learning mechanism. In each iteration of the local search operator, one neighborhood move is selected with a probability if the move can improve the solution. We will give it a uh, reward, otherwise it will be punished. We will uh, record the success or the failure of the local search operations, and then I will use this uh, information to update to the probability of carrying these operations in the following iteration. The performance of the proposed approach was tested on five benchmark instances divided from the instance proposed by Cordo and Lapo uh, in 2003 with some modification. In the original instance, it is assumed that the server time is uh, 10 units of time and uh, the maximum time that uh, the customer can, can speed in the vehicles is about uh, 19, 19, which seems to us very large uh, in the cases. So we suppose that instead of a single vehicle central depot, we consider that each uh, vehicle has a specified location where it's preferred to start each trip and a final destination of the trial, and that each, um, and that, uh, each vehicle has a time of those on, on the destination point. For each uh, vertex, uh, the service time is equal to two minutes, and the maximum ride right time is equal to 30 minutes. And for taxis, we suppose that the maximum capacity is fixed in three passengers, and the maximum duration of each uh, route uh, is uh, 90 minutes. We have some uh, initial results uh, that are in progress. In the table, we present a summary of results. Uh, so the three columns, uh, the three first columns represent the test, uh, the test instance with up to 134 requests. We, uh, so we see that uh, on average, uh, on average, uh, 76 percent of requests are satisfied. For the second objective, we see that the customers arrive on average. Uh, uh, 11 for 20 minutes before the desired time. And from the driver point of view, the driver arrives at his destination after one minute, which is uh, trainable. The analysis of the third objective uh, show that the average uh, ratio of, uh, of actual travel time to direct, uh, direct travel time is between uh, 0 0.184 and 1.10. For the security time uh, for the algorithm to assign customers to taxis is about uh, 24, 34 minutes for the large uh, answers. So to conclude, uh, we propose a dynamite problem with some other features that reflect uh, the priorities of the drivers. It start, starts at uh, the taxi's origin and ends at his destination. Considering uh, the course passengers' preferences and diverse preferences, in this presentation, we focus on the static version of the problem. 
to tackle the problem, an iterative local search has been developed, which consists of applying first a uh, random variable the central heuristic to obtain a good initial solution to our iterated local search, and then uh, applying iteratively a perturbation on the local search path. Numerical results uh, show that uh, the proposed method can provide solution with uh, satisfactory quality in a reasonable time, taking into account the complexity of the problem. Currently, we work uh, on a direct uh, extension of the problem, consists of uh, the dynamic version with other assumptions. Tests are in progress, considering large instances and methods uh, to accelerate the convergence of our approach to reduce computational time. So here are some references used uh, in this work. Uh, and uh, thank you for your attention. Hello, everybody. So my article's name is Survey of Management Project Methods with an emphasis of on the Moroccan context. So in my presentation, I will begin by an introduction, uh, some important definition in my project management. We'll see an overview of uh, choice of methods, uh, then some existing studies. Uh, we'll see uh, some important indicator and results of these studies. Uh, after this, the methodology I applied in my research and we'll finish by a conclusion. So let's begin by the introduction. So when, when I begin my research, I, I noticed that there is no many studies realized in Morocco about the problem of project failure. I think because this is more affected by the private sector population, which is generally not oriented toward doctoral research. The project managers in the private um, sector, although they have many interesting ideas and have important skills, they choose the way that will allow them to progress in the multinational company in which they work. It's general, generally training and certification and not research subjects that they choose. And as I have been working in this sector for a long time, more than 12 years, I know that is in Morocco. Uh, it, will be, it would be interesting, very interesting to carry out the same studies already achieved in other countries in order to help uh, our project managers optimize their work and ensure the success of their projects based on the failures already experienced in Morocco. So my professional experience remains marked by the failure of the biggest projects I have ever been involved in. It was about a transformation of the information system of a large multinational company. A project that lasted for years and required huge financial and human expenses. It was a real disaster for the company because the decision to go back was very costly. I had done a very good work on it, of which I was proud, but unfortunately, it could not see the light of day. This failure really marked me and inspired me a lot to start my research subject. So another motivation I had was, was to give the possibility to our Moroccan project managers around the world uh, to give an image of the Moroccan projects management with the real indicator drawn from the field, the Moroccan field. So these are the main reasons why I decided to choose the project management optimization as the subject of my research, during which I prepared an investigation, including a maximum of questions that will allow me to come to come out with interesting statistics on Morocco project management indicators that will help me to describe comfortably and confidently the state of project management in Morocco to highlight the best recommendations for our our future projects. This is my my goals. So 
let's begin uh, by the the definition of of project uh, management so the project will begin by the project the project is a set of actions that we wish to undertake in order to achieve a goal in this sense the project is indeed the draft of the future a draft but not yet a, re a realization with the exception of personal projects, the majority of projects involve several people. We speak about project actors. These actors are the project's human resources. In addition to these human resources, a project may also require material resources for its implementation. All of these resources really represent a cost, salaries and wages for human resources, purchase or rental prices for material resources. A project needs generally budgeting. And finally, the project normally leads to the production of tangible and intangible results. These results are called outputs. And the project management also called project control, is a process which aims to structure and ensure the successful execution of a project. Conduct, conducting a project means taking all the necessary major to ensure that the project achieves its, its objectives, in particular on four main axes, the respect of the objectives, of the quality of the deliverable, the respect of deadlines, the respect of codes and customer satisfaction. So you know, you know that to put all the changes, just chances on the side of the project manager in his project management, some basic principle must be applied. In practice, a method will support him in the different phases of project management, from the definition to objectives. Of, the, of objectives to the achievement of deliverable through resource allocation and schedule management. So if you want to define the method, it can be defined as the formal, formalization of the rules of success of a project. It synthesizes past experiences in order to extract fundamentals or good practices. Once formalized, it proposes a framework for conducting the projects. Thus, the use of a method worthy of the name allows taking full advantage of the experience of the conceptors. A method is a guide. It's the fruit of the experiences accumulated during the realization of many projects before. It provides a framework for the de development of the projects by relying on the good practices thus acquired. So depending on the company's objectives, structure and culture, one or mix of several methodologies will be applied. Managing a project without a clear methodology is like building a house without a plane. You can have the best idea in the world. It will be difficult to be efficient while respecting the deadline and the budget. So choosing the right project management methodology is an essential step to a successful project. This is why a project must be managed by a very, very, very good project manager whose personal touch has a huge impact on the progress and success of the project. It's also possible to create a hybrid methodology that brings together elements of different methodologies. Okay. So uh, let's talk about uh, the results of some existing studies about uh, success and failure of projects, for example. So we have here some indicators. We have 39% uh, of all projects succeed, delivered on time, on budget, and with all required future and fun functionality. And 43% are delivered, but encounter problems, late over budget, uh, with missing futures, and 18 fail, either cancelled before completion or delivered, but never used. So in general, project failure rates are, are high. 
the greater the complexity and the size of a project, the higher the risk of failure. This same logical, I think. And the keys to a successful project are the technical skills of the team, then the management support, good communication within the team, agile methods, leadership of certified project managers, and effective soft skills within the team. And according to some studies, the success of a project is measured according to the following criteria. First, satisfied stakeholders, on time delivery, on budget delivery, achievement of targeted benefits, achievement of high quality deliverables, achieving an acceptable return of investment. And another study revealed that the three main causes of project failure are a change in the, in the company's priorities, a change in project objectives, and an incorrect collection of requirements. And about the Agile methods, uh, according to another new study, uh, we have 56% of companies use only one project management methodology and 52% of people in the interviewed stated that more than half of their company's teams use the Agile methods. However, only 11% of companies use Agile methodologies all the time for all their projects. That means they use a hybrid methods. The company adapt the Agile methods to accelerate software delivery, to manage changing priorities, to increase productivity, to, Im to improve the alignment between business and, uh, and the IT, to increase software quality. And Agile, Agile projects have high success rates. A study indicates that Agile projects are 28% more successful than traditional projects. So let's move to the methodology I applied in my research. I was co constrained to respect the company's privacy and to proceed by a method taking into account the imposed anonymity. Therefore, I opted for a series of surveys in order to collect as much data as possible from the field. The investigation was elaborated based on all these elements. First, studies carried out on project management in other countries, uh, interviews with a number of project engineers working in the public and private sector here in Morocco, and my own 13 years of professional experience in this domain. So on the basis of all these elements, a survey was realized towards an, uh, an online questionnaire. The survey was performed during the month of December 2020. And two, five, six actives answered more than 20 questions in a very precise manner. They are people who have managed or participated in the management of a project working either in the private or public sector. It represents for me a high database to analyze in order to extract the most important indicators reflecting the state of project manager management in Morocco. So as a conclusion, this was a brief presentation of my thesis subjects, as well as my motivation uh, for this choice, beginning with the zoom on the basic concept of project management, then I mentioned the most important indicator uh, obtained from global studies on the failure and success of projects. The objective is to study the case of Morocco for an optimization of the management of its projects. The study will continue in order to carry out my survey adapted to the case of Morocco, then the detailed analysis of the results obtained in order to draw the best recommendations for better project management. So thank you very much. Good morning. And Welcome to my presentation about 
convolutional neural networks approach in COVID-19 screening in asymptomatic individuals. Presented to you by Mohamed Amin Ziyad, a PhD student at the University of Sultan Muley Sliman, presented this presentation at the International Conference on Optimization and Application, the seventh edition. 2021. The plan we are going to use for this presentation is as following. We are going to start with an introduction to introduce the the, the paper and the work where where we are done we have done. Then we go to see the data set, which is the database that you, we are we used for this this paper the method which means the algorithm the results and at the end a discussion and conclusion the new coronavirus namely covid-19 spread rapidly around the globe and hits around 6 million of cases as reported by the world health organization at the time of uh, writing the, the, the paper. Uh, the growth of uh, cases made it hard for doctors and radiologists to correctly diagnose the, the COVID-19 disease. So <clears throat> the use of uh, automated methods can be helpful to efficiently and accurately detect the disease and can also be used to assist doctors who lack the, 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 the proper, tool, proper tools for diagnosis. So in, 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 in the present uh, paper, we provide a, a, a novel method by using convolutional ne neural networks to accurately classify COVID-19 cases from raw chest X-ray images by 95% so the, the, the proposed and the proposed model is lightweight and can easily be deployed on, on to the cloud or mobile devices with little computing power. In December 2019, a new coronavirus disease, COVID-19, was discovered in Wuhan, China. The, vir the virus that caused it is called Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2 or uh, as abbreviated as SARS-CoV-2. The coronavirus started originally in China and spread to Japan, South Korea and Europe. After that, Italy and Spain in, in particular, where it hits very hard. In Morocco, the first known case traced back to the 2nd of March and it went up to nearly 6,000 cases in 11th of May 2020. As of the writing of this paper, there is l l nearby 6.2 million cases in the world according to World Health Organization and in this in this paper uh, we're, 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 we're going to uh, emphasize the the role of doctors and radiologists important task to diagnose cases whether they whether they have uh, COVID-19 or not to a certain accuracy. The problem is it is easy to get overwhelmed looking at the, the huge number of cases. This can lead us to think about automated methods, mainly machine learning methods, which, is, which gained a huge success in recent years to assist radiologists in this mission. The dataset used in this paper comes from two different sources. 
The first one is Chest X Ray 8 database by Wong and used it in his paper and cited in the, the original paper. And the second source is from an open database of COVID-19 cases with X-ray chest or computed demography images. So we combined the two databases and got one big database which we run our algorithm on this database to, uh, to test the, the, the efficiency of, of the proposed algorithm. And the, the classes is composed of 125 X-ray images diagnosed with COVID-19 and 500 images with no finding. As you can see here, we have the image. The, the first row is images with COVID-19 and the second one with no COVID-19, which we called no findings. And in order to increase the quantity and the diversity of the data available for the model training, we used the following technique, used four techniques to increase the, the data. The first one is the cheering transformation, which, which is uh, a kind of uh, translation to the original image to get more images similar but quite different. The second one is zooming inside the images to take certain parts of the image. The horizontal flip, which is the, 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 the mirror effect, and rescaling images, which means taken from 0 to 2055 to 0, 1 for computational efficiency. The algorithm we used in this paper is called Convolutional Neural Network, or shortly CNN. CNN is an enhanced version of neural networks, and the experience has proven that CNN works better with image classification problems, which is the same as the, the problem we're trying to solve in this paper. The architecture we have here is uh, is the, the 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 different layers in the this in this uh, this uh, this network. We have the first one is a convolutional layer, the second one is max pooling layer, the third convolutional layer max pooling convolutional max pooling, and at the end is the the output layer. So we have here. The input layer where we input the X-ray images as input and it goes through the different layers to arrive at the end which is the predictions. So it's either have COVID-19 or no COVID-19. The, the, the number of parameters used in this model is around 1 million parameter the proposed model was run for 100 epoch epoch means iterations 100 iterations and we used the uh, cross validation to validate the training process after running the model we got an accuracy of around 95 percent and in the the figures we have here we have the first one is the model loss which means the the error and the second one is the model accuracy which is the 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 accuracy of the model of how how this model can predict accurately the 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 the, the correct class and we can see here that the, the accuracy increases as the iterations go up while sometimes it goes down because of the, the unbalanced data set which means the, the number of images in 
COVID-19 classes is less than, uh, than no finding. <coughs> the model converges to an accuracy. You can see here that it goes up uh, it, and until it converges at 95%, which is counted as one of the, 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 the good results in COVID-19 classifications. If we, if we go to, to, to the error, uh, we can see that the error is going down as the approach goes forward, despite the, the instability that is caused by, by the nature of the optimization algorithm we used. In this paper, we presented a fully automated method to classify X-ray chest images and the proposed model can classify or detect COVID-19 by a good uh, accuracy percentage and we strongly believe that this percentage can be enhanced by training the, 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 the model for the over bigger data sets and use, or, or using uh, transfer learning to take advantage of, of already existing pre-trained models and the, the surplus of the value of this model is its smaller size it's around 5 megabytes and with this we can deploy it to the cloud or embedded devices with limited resources like mobile or IoT devices and thank you for your attention Hello, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to present this work entitled Towards a Machine Learning and Data Mining Approach to Identify Customer Satisfaction Factors on Airbnb. My name is Mohamed Shini, and this work was made by myself, Omar Ben Sherf, and Yunus Shihab. Customer satisfaction is a major priority for companies, especially for those operating in the tourism sector especially since customers share their opinion about their experience on social networks or dedicated platforms. In the existing literature, there are many studies that attempt to understand the determinants of customer satisfaction, but these studies don't take into account the category to which the client belongs. These categories are individuals, couples, and families. In our study, we analyzed 100,000 reviews left by customers on the Airbnb platform towards accommodations located in London. We adopted an approach based on natural language processing to segment the reviews according to the categories of the customers. Then, we trained two regression algorithms, in this case, multiple linear regression and gradient boosting regression to determine the weights of the six elementary scores noted on Airbnb. These six elementary scores are accuracy, cleanliness, check-in, communication, location, and value. The methodology of our work is as follows. We have collected a large amount of reviews and scores posted by customers on the Airbnb platforms through the Inside Airbnb tool. Inside Airbnb is a survey website that reports and visualizes scraped data regarding property rentals on Airbnb. We cleaned and filtered reviews written in English. We would like to note that the language of the review doesn't really matter in our study, as it's mainly the score value that we are most interested in. But we plan to apply sentiment analysis algorithms on the data in a future work. The reviews were segmented according to the client category. Then, we trained two regression models to calculate the weights of the six elementary scores. Concerning data collection, this data is for homes located in London with reviews published between December 2009 and April 2020. The data contains about a million and a half reviews left by customers and covers thousands of accommodations listed on the platform. Among the fields collected are the customer reviews, the six basic scores rated on a scale of 10 and the overall score rated on a scale of 100. 
Many other fields were collected, but it's the score and reviews that interest us most in this study. This figure illustrates an extract of the data set after crossing and aggregating the fields. The next step is data cleaning and filtering. In fact, we only retained the data that didn't have missing or inconsistent fields. Then we filtered the reviews to keep only those written in English. The language is detected following an approach that consists in computing the probability of the language based on the pronunciation features using the naive Bayes algorithm with n-gram character. We would like to note that the operation of language detection on a large volume of data requires considerable time. It's for this reason that we selected 100,000 reviews that we consider sufficient for our study. Then we proceeded to the segmentation. We used algorithm derived from natural language processing, mainly syntactic dependency parsing, which highlights the syntactic structure of a sentence and which is represented by a dependency tree in order to detect the relationships that its elements have. For example, in this sentence, I'm enjoying here, the subject I indicates the first person singular. This comment is most likely written by a customer who belongs to the individual category. So, this operation allowed us to segment 38,543 reviews, most likely left by customers who belong to the individual category. Unfortunately, we have not found any approved algorithms or methods that allow the reviews to be segmented into the remaining two categories. So, we proceed to process strings using regular expression. At the end of this operation, we identified 5,495 reviews written by couples and 10,874 family reviews. The rest of the reviews don't contain enough occurrences to identify their category. The main stage of our work consists in calculating the coefficients acting on the different elementary scores. We therefore express this formula. Beta 1 to beta 6 represent the coefficients that our models seek to calculate. They act respectively on accuracy, cleanliness, checking, communication, location, and value. Each of these features is rated on a scale of 10. GS represents the global score noted on a scale of 100. It represents the target for our model. To calculate the coefficients which act on the elementary scores, we have proposed two models of regression, namely multiple linear regression and the gradient boosting regression. Regression is a supervised learning model adapted to quantitative data. Regression is used when the variables are continuous, as is the case of the global score, as opposed to classification models, which are adapted to discrete variables. Each model is applied for the three categories studied, namely individual, couples, and families. We split our data into two lots. The train set is 80% data and the test set 20%. Then we trained our two regression models. Now we will explore the results found. After training our two models, we calculated the coefficient of determination R squared, which represents a measure of the quality of the prediction of a linear regression. The results are illustrated in the following table. We can see that the prediction quality of the gradient boosting regression algorithm is slightly better than that of multiple linear regression. The following graph shows the coefficients calculated using the multiple linear regression algorithm. The pink bar represents the calculated weights for individuals. The blue bar is for couples and families are represented by the orange bar. As can be seen, accuracy is the most important determinant of all customer categories. The opposite is true for the location, which seems to be the least important indicator. We can also note that the level of importance of an indicator changes from one category to another. For example, communication seems to be an important indicator for individuals and couples, more than for families. 
With the gradient boosting regression algorithm, we still see that communication is the most significant indicator for all categories. It's even clear that the coefficient associated with communication calculated using GBR is much higher than the one computed by MLR if we compare it to the other five indicators. Again, there are differences in the perceived importance for the indicator to client depending on their category. For both regression models used, the indicators are ranked overall in this order accuracy, value, cleanliness, communication, check-in, and location. Depending on their category, customers are not equally interested in the different indicators noted on Airbnb. Although, there are slight differences between the results obtained with the two algorithms, if we consider each category separately. The importance of the accuracy seems to be unanimous. Indeed, this indicator is ranked first among the six indicators rated on Airbnb. Moreover, Airbnb is aware of its importance. It even encourages hosts to publish accurate and abundant descriptions for their accommodations. As a conclusion, we tried in this work to understand the importance of each score rated by the customer on Airbnb by using two regression models to calculate the associated weights. We found that these indicators are considered by customers in the following order accuracy, value, cleanliness, communication, check-in, location. We also noted that clients do not perceive the six indicators with the same importance, depending on the category they belong to. However, it would be inconsistent to claim that the drivers of customer satisfaction in this area are limited by six indicators. Indeed, in another study we conducted in order to propose a client-centric evaluation system, we tried to predict the global score using neural networks, and we were able to conclude that the six scores noted on Airbnb are not sufficient to understand accurately the level of customer satisfaction. In any case, we believe that the result of this study could be useful to hosts to develop a better experience for their guests taking into account their category. Thank you.